Hey, hi, I'm Chris and Chris, and welcome to So Cool Science. Science you can do right at home. I'm just checking out this pelvis and going over today's science file. And today's science file, it says, How do you tell the difference between a male and female skeleton? Well, that's an awesome question. Try this. You will need your parents. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to tell the difference between a male skeleton and a female skeleton. So grab your parents, because your parents are gonna become your own personal guinea pig as I show you some wicked cool things that you can feel on your parents' heads. And parents, have fun! High five! <laughs> Just kidding! <laughs> okay, all right. Start by feeling your dad's brow ridge. All right, and then feel your mom's brow ridge. <laughs> You'll notice that your dad's brow ridge is a lot thicker. Now, try this. Feel your dad's jawbone. Yeah, all right. And then feel your mom's jawbone. your dad's jawbone is a lot more flat and that your mom's jawbone is a lot more curved. That's cool, right? All right, check this out. Now, feel the back of your dad's head. All right, you'll feel a bump on the back of his head. Now, feel the back of your mom's head. Whoa, now check that out. You can't feel a bump on the back of your mom's head. Now that's so wicked cool! So, why do females and males have different features on their skull? And what else can you tell from a skeleton? Well, don't look at me! Take a closer look at this. The reason you can tell whether a skeleton is male or female by the skull is because of sexual selection. Females are looking for a more masculine face and males are looking for a more feminine face. This is why the male mandible is more flat or rigid, as well as why males have a larger superorbital ridge than females. These things shape the skull into a more masculine face, which is attractive to females. The reason males have a larger external occipital protuberance is because males tend to have more mass to their muscles, which also makes the face more masculine. This extra mass means the muscle will pull harder on the attachment site, and thus you'll get a larger muscle attachment site on a bone. Another way to tell the difference between a female and male skeleton is the pelvis. Females tend to have a cup-shaped pelvis to support baby growth, whereas males tend to have a flatter pelvis. The female pelvis also has a wider, rounder pelvic cavity than males, which allows babies to be birthed. Males tend to have a more heart-shaped pelvic cavity. These skeletal changes don't happen until after the male or female has gone through puberty. So now you know the difference between a male skeleton and a female skeleton. You know, being able to actually feel the differences right at home is why science is so cool. It is cool, right? Wave goodbye. See ya! <laughs>